Welcome everyone to this edition of Insights. Today we're taking a trip on the Thunder Bay River to explore ROV technology and we'll tell you how shipwrecks are a driving force of tourism in our area. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of this station. Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those in the community, as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. All right, well, John Capeless has um, joined me here to talk about the classroom tours. He is a teacher at Alpena High School for both history and earth sciences. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure. Um, can you tell me a, a little bit about what you guys have been talking about in the classroom that's kind of transferring to today's classroom tour? Absolutely. Uh, Shipwreck Alley is a, uh, an earth science class that we offer at Alpena High School. It's designed to cover all aspects of marine sanctuary operation. Mm -hmm. We start the class with students learning why there's a marine sanctuary here. Right. It's the only freshwater marine sanctuary and there are only 14 marine protected areas in the nation and we have one of them and so I want kids to know why is it here uh, right off the shores of Alpena. And so we talk about the things that cause shipwrecks. First of all, why are there so many wrecks? And we discuss the fact that this was a, a major uh, highway but on the water and that any ship on its way to Lake Superior or Lake Michigan would have to pass right by Alpena. And the shipping lanes were very narrow because people were trying to save time and skirt around the shore as quickly as possible, which put a lot of ships in the same place at the same time. So you have collisions, storms, um, human error, fog, running aground, all kinds of things that caused a number of ships to sink right off our shores. Right. So we get the kids to learn about why there's a marine sanctuary here. Okay, and they also are learning about ROVs, correct? Yes, the class covers many things. We study the geology of the Great Lakes and how the Great Lakes formed and why it's a unique resource and, and it's here. Um, so how do the Great Lakes form? We talk about meteorology, we talk about history and economics of the region, but we really start to focus on archeology span about midway through the course. And one of the tools that archeologists use is an ROV. And it's a great way to bring hands-on learning into the classroom. Definitely. The students can learn about science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, by building ROVs and there are many applications that the students can explore. Some students really enjoy hands-on learning and it's a way to make things more concrete. So we have Tane Casserly from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary come in and talk about how archaeologists use technology, ROVs, AUVs, which are um, autonomous underwater vehicles, mm -hmm. and we talk about uh, different types of sonar, but then we focus in on ROVs as a tool that they can use when it's dangerous for a diver to explore a wreck or they want more time on a wreck, and then we start actually thinking about how to design and build one. Okay, great. So how does um, what they have learned in the classroom transfer over to what they're learning today on the boat? So today's activity on the boat takes us out to Thunder Bay Island to, to investigate the shipwreck of the Monahansett. One of the things we've done is build ROVs to do that investigation and then Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary brought one of their pro, uh, professionally built ROVs and four research divers to help our students investigate the wreck. And what they're doing is they're, they're number one, getting to use their ROVs in open water for the first time. We test them in the pool and then we take them out and see what they can do on the lake. Exciting. It is very exciting. The kids love it. And so then we actually try to investigate the wreck. We try to learn a little bit about the condition of the wreck, mm -hmm. how well preserved or uh, damaged it may be. And, you know, so it's condition on the bottom. And then we also look at invasive species. Students were looking at the shipwreck and trying to determine how much of the wreck has been covered by zebra mussels okay. and what impact that has on being able to see construction details. Um, that archaeologists would be interested in. Okay, great. And all of this stuff is right in their backyard. Why do you think it's so important that students kind of take um, what Alpina has to offer and put it to use? Well, as an educator, the biggest connection for me is to show the students that there are world-class uh, archaeologists and, and top-notch scientists doing work in their backyard. Mm -hmm. So the history that they learn, the science that they learn, all of the things that we do in the classroom uh, have practical applications right here in Alpena. And of course we want to teach the kids, part of the mission of the class is to teach the kids that uh, these artifacts are, are treasures and that they bring 
they bring economic value to the community as well as scientific value and historic value. Um, they're finite, they're non-renewable. Uh, I mean, we could have more shipwrecks, of course, but the shipwrecks that are there are treasures and we can learn a lot from them and so we need to protect them. So preservation, uh, which is one of the major missions of Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, is also a big theme in our class. How do you take care of these wrecks? How do you investigate the wrecks and how do you gain as much information as you can from them? But also, you know, what is the value to the community? It's a great, it's a great economic driver in Alpena. It brings in tourists and it brings in lots of people to, to take in the glass bottom boat that we were on today or the heritage center that we're visiting right now. Um, and then in addition to that, the students can uh, be advocates for the sanctuary when they leave the class. Yeah, definitely. Um, so much great um, themes to learn from your class um, and that students are learning with hands-on here at the sanctuary and also in the boat and in your classroom. Um, how, what do you hope that the students will take away from today? Today was a capstone experience or a, a culminating experience for the class. So they've worked very hard all trimester long learning about the sanctuary, learning about the technology, building, designing and creating their own ROV. And now they, today was an experience for them. They got to use it and put it in action. And for many of these kids, this was the first time they were able, uh, able to see a shipwreck. I've never seen it before and I've always wanted to come on the glass bottom boat. Um, it was just cool. Like my best experience was to see like as soon as we came up on the shipwreck and we saw over top of it, it was just like overwhelming. We're coming out to the shipwreck to test out the RVs that we've been building, talk to some divers about, you know, how they, I don't know, just how they do things, I guess. We're really just trying to learn how the whole getting to the shipwreck and learning about it, you know, process goes. More than anything today, any, any learning that came out of today is a bonus because today is more of a reward for the students to put their put their learning to the test mm -hmm. and but also to just be able to enjoy the sanctuary and the resources that we have here okay well then I'll take it back to the class um, before they had this capstone journey um, what do you hope that they'll take away from your class great question I think the best thing about Shipwreck Alley is that it introduces students to so many different topics whether it's geology biology environmental science, meteorology, science, engineering, technology, and math, the, 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 the ROV concepts. Mm -hmm. um, all of these things are, are, all of these activities that we do in the class are a great way to show students different career pathways. And every time I have a guest speaker from the sanctuary or from the college marine tech program come in, I always ask them, what is your origin story? How did you get here mm -hmm. today? So that students can see how what they're learning in Alpena High School can turn into a career for them and, and a career path. So career pathways are one of the coolest things. And then this side note, everyone likes shipwrecks. It's fun. So hopefully these kids will get it, have some enthusiasm for learning about shipwrecks and they'll become scuba divers or snorkels, a wreck or two and just enjoy the sanctuary. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and letting us um, aboard the boat and um, experience everything that your kids got to experience today. You're so, very welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. When we come back, we'll talk to the Thunder Bay Marine Sanctuary and see what their part is in discovering the shipwrecks and using ROV technology. Welcome back everyone to Insights. Now Sarah Waters joins me from the Marine Sanctuary and she is the education coordinator here. Thank you for joining me so much. Sure, my pleasure. Um, so I wanted to talk about how the Thunder Bay Marine Sanctuary is one of many of Alpena's little treasures that we have here. Um, why is it such a great resource, do you think? I think the Marine Sanctuary um, is a great resource because it touches so many areas of, of Alpena that are growing and um, flourishing from education to tourism um, to really being the sanctuary of the Great Lakes. Yeah, um, and why is the Marine Sanctuary kind of covers a whole range of different avenues that you can kind of look into that create science and those kind of themes. Why do you think marine technology is so important for us here? Well, that's another avenue uh, the Sanctuary really touches on is uh, uh, by existing here, it provides an opportunity for researchers to come and uh, do all kinds of explor exploration in the Sanctuary from researching uh, sinkholes, um, to testing equipment, um, uh, testing technology out in the sanctuary. So uh, although the base is definitely shipwreck research, it really opens the door for so many other things. And um, 
because ACC has the new marine technology program, uh, that's just one more reason for folks to come here and to do research um, or to come for school to do research and then have the opportunity right in our back door to get out on the water and apply what they've learned. Definitely. Um, and so marine technology is kind of a big thing and we always hear about shipwrecks and ROVs. Um, can you explain to me a little bit about what the sanctuary is doing here using those two forces? Sure, absolutely. So ROVs are a tool in the toolbox of the archaeologist. Uh, definitely have their place to go and investigate a site, um, whether it be um, too deep or dangerous or inconvenient um, or cost effective. Uh, there's lots of different reasons that would come into play, but definitely a tool archaeologists can use to go view a particular site or a shipwreck. And certainly that's a piece of technology that um, really takes some knowledge not only to pilot, right, to drive it around and do the looking, but also to maintain it. Um, and, uh, you know, so technology is always going wrong, right? <laughs> right? So there's always has to be somebody to take care of that technology and know how to effectively use it. So in the marine sanctuary, our archaeologists and researchers you, uh, apply the ROVs um, to their own research. Um, but as you saw today, actually a great educational tool to get in science, technology, education, and math um, for students as well. Great. And so speaking about the tour that I just came from, you guys do a lot of classroom tours. Why do you do that and how do you think it helps students? Well, the classroom cruises are a fantastic opportunity. Alpina Shipwreck Tours um, has been great by partnering with the sanctuary to offer a special rate for uh, students to come on as a class and take a glass bottom boat tour. Now today you went out on an um, even more particular um, special event where they had right. some divers in the water. Um, so they've just been a fantastic resource to help get more students out there and able to actually experience the shipwrecks in the sanctuary. Uh, great to learn about them in the classroom yeah. or you know on the web, but even better to go see it in person. Right, right and get that hands-on experience. Absolutely. I know the kids were thrilled, so it was really fun to see. Um, let's talk about shipwrecks. How do we, what's the marine sanctuary's um, part in kind of preserving the shipwrecks? Well, that's why the Marine Sanctuary exists here, to preserve and protect uh, the shipwrecks as cultural resources out in Thunder Bay. And so that's our main focus. It's all about the shipwrecks. Mm -hmm. um, we monitor them, we document them, and then we um, watch them for change over time. Uh, but we realize that um, to protect these resources, people need to know about them. And so if you're not a scuba diver um, or a technical diver, um, how are you going to find out about these resources and why should you care? So that's why we have our visitor center here in Alpena uh, where people can come and learn about this fantastic resource um, without getting wet. When visitors come to um, the Marine Sanctuary, what do they learn about the shipwrecks? The Marine Sanctuary Visitor Center um, really gives a great overview of Great Lakes maritime history um, from uh, glacial formation right through to modern day. So we have kind of a timeline uh, that we show examples of uh, different types of ships throughout um, the years and what they would have looked like not as shipwrecks but right. um, as actual sh ships. Um, applying Great Lakes waters and then we actually show them as shipwrecks in the sanctuary. So we both feature particular shipwrecks from the marine sanctuary and also a general history of Great Lakes uh, maritime commerce. Uh, of course there's a hands-on component. We've really set our visitor center up to engage um, families and so okay. there's lots of hands-on things to do. Um, they can walk the decks of a full-size replica canal schooner and see what that would look like um, as a diver and also see artifacts from shipwrecks from around the Great Lakes. Okay, and they have so many hands-on tools that you guys have provided here. Um, why is that important for you guys to kind of inform not only the community that we have here but also tourists? Well, I think tourism uh, is a really great opportunity economically for Alpena um, and certainly the sanctuary's maritime cultural landscape here is a great draw for people, uh, both for people who have a high interest in history already, but also as a destination to have fun and, uh, and learn something at the same time. So we're really happy to be here and drawing people in um, from outside the community to check out all that Alpena has to offer. Um, as a great spot in Northeast Michigan. Okay, and what do you think, um, since we did just come from the classroom tours, what do you think the best part for the students is? 
getting to go out on the water, out on the lake for sure. Um, obviously seeing the shipwreck through the glass bottom, but um, just getting a chance to get outside and get on the water. I think um, anything you learn when you're out doing something has a greater uh, impact and you will remember that a lot more um, than, than uh, anything else you do. And taking that impact, how do you guys here at the Sanctuary hope that through classroom tours that students will kind of develop their knowledge of marine biology? Well, we think it's a great opportunity for students to see potential career paths. I mean, if you don't get to have an experience like this, maybe you would never think that that might be something I could do right. in the future. And it really is a growing field. Certainly, um, ocean and even Great Lakes exploration is wide open and growing every year. And so there are jobs out there to get in these fields. And so we want to engage students and show them, hey, you can go out and do this. You think it's interesting? Pursue it as a career. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I love talking with you, and there's so much history here, so thank you for sharing. You're welcome. All right, well, when we come back after the break, we'll talk to Downtown Development, and they'll tell us how the Marine Sanctuary is a driving force in tourism. Welcome back, everybody. Well, now I'm sitting down with Leslie Dort, who is the Executive Director at the Downtown Development Authority. Thank you so much for visiting today. Oh, thanks for coming downtown. I know, it's a, it's a beautiful day today. It's gorgeous down here. And so I'm very pleased about it. Um, but I wanted to sit down and talk to you about kind of the tourism draw here to Alpena. But specifically, we just came from doing um, the boat cruises. Um, and the Marine Sanctuary has been a great draw here for Alpena. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, it's been lovely. Now, were you on the Niagara or the Lady Michigan? The Lady Michigan. Ah, oh, nice. Yes. Yeah, the, the shipwrecks. I mean, they're such a great historical draw for folks and for local and outside of Alpena. Exactly. And why do you think um, the Marine Sanctuary has been such a drive for tourism here? Well, it's huge in that the educational aspect. I think people are looking more and more for substance to their vacations. Mm -hmm. They don't just want to go and look. Right. They want to learn while they're there at whatever level that might be, mm -hmm. even if they just say they went to learn. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, going through the museum there is, is a kick. There's a lot of activities no matter what your age. You find things that you didn't know you'd, you'd find interesting. Right. Even if you're not interested in maritime, mm -hmm. you'll find something there that's, that's phenomenal. Something will catch your eye. Yep. And then the Lady Michigan, of course, I mean, that just speaks for itself. You get out on the water and our lake's, lake is beautiful. Right, that glass bottom tour, we yeah. saw scuba divers under there, the shipwrecks, everything. Oh. And the, the crew and the captain, I mean, they absolutely rock, so they make the trip fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most days you're going to see some phenomenal shipwrecks down there in really clear waters. Mm -hmm. And our waters preserve them so beautifully. Right. So right. you'll get the history, you'll get the adventure and you're not that far from home. Right, and people come from really all over the world to visit Alpena and see what we have to offer here. Yeah, and they've done a phenomenal job of demographics, mm -hmm. keeping up with where people are visiting from. Uh, in, in downtown Alpena alone, be, a big part because of the Maritime Center, we could have up to 85,000 to 100,000 folks passing through wow. this summer. Wow, that's so phenomenal. And so tourism is a really big thing here for Alpena, I feel like, because we do have so much to offer. Um, but what people may not realize is it's not just one specific thing, it's everything that Alpena encompasses. Uh, yeah. And so they may come <laughs> for the maritime um, history and see that, but they're really visiting all throughout downtown, visiting our shops. Um, how does that help drive economic development? It's the key to it. It's, it's a big driver to economic development, both tourism and they're coming not to have um, that wild, crazy, over-the-top time. Mm -hmm. You know, the tourist that's coming to Alpena and the person who lives in Alpena likes their quiet sports. They like to connect with themselves, with their family, with the friends they're visiting with. We're, we epitomize so much of our brand, mm -hmm. the Sanctuary of the Great Lakes, because here's where you come to relax and get away from everything. Right. For those of us fortunate enough to live here, we get to do that every day, right? <laughs> we get to find these little parks throughout the downtown and different areas of Alpena and maybe have lunch or take a respite. But for tourists, they're coming to town and they're finding all these gems tucked in the corners. Yeah. You know, maybe they'll park their car over at the Maritime Center, go through the museum, rent one of their phenomenal bikes, right? Because they've got the new bike rental program coming up this summer. Exactly. Get their bike, come across the bridge, park it in one of the DDA bike racks that all the businesses are sponsoring and stroll around. And we've got everything from paint your own pottery, wine tasting, retail shops, 
you could spend a day in downtown Alpena and probably not hit all the cute shops. Right, right. Um, and it's more than just, like we said, there's so many cute shops, it's more than just going into one, but really just strolling around and seeing everything. Yeah. And never consider your downtown your post office. You shouldn't be parking out front, going to get a stamp, and, <laughs> and <laughs> heading <then> you... <laughs> home. Because <laughs> you're not experiencing it at all. You're missing so much, and you're missing the community of it. Even as a tourist, I've had tourists that I've spoken with, they're just stunned at how friendly Alpena is. Um, the store owners are outside sweeping their sidewalk. The doors are open, very inviting and welcoming. Uh, people say hi to one another. Right. It's not the big city where you don't make eye contact. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we want eye contact. We want to connect with one another. Right, have that community feel. Absolutely, because we're all part of it and we all make the difference. Right. So how do you think um, local businesses here can really help develop economic development for tourists who come in? By putting their best foot forward no matter who walks through their door, which, I mean, they do. The thing I always try to keep in mind in the economic development sphere of downtown, the tourist that's walking through your door could be the next business owner in Alpena, especially if they're in the 50-year-old age group and above, right? Because they're getting near retirement, they're starting to think of, okay, now what I really want to do with life, now that I've made my money and raised my family. If they had a great vacation here, they might bring their business here. Mm -hmm. They could be one of any number of stores or cute little shops, or maybe they have a great idea for us. So economically speaking, they're gonna bring us those nice ideas. Right. You know, pick the brain of the tourists too when they're in town. Let me just stop in my store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that way you can leverage that positive event. Yeah, definitely. And what do you think um, some local Alpenians and local people to Alpena County don't really um, realize that Alpena has to offer in terms of getting people here and expanding? What the locals don't know about, we have a lot of um, cooperative programs. Right now we've got a Chamber of Commerce, a Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Economic Arm of the Chamber Target, and a Downtown Development Authority that work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And we have turnkey options for you to help you with getting through all the government red tape if there happens to be any, which our city does a great job of streamlining. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of programs. There's grants that we could leverage. There's a lot of ways and it's lovely right now because all of us are headed in the same direction. Right. We don't all have different ideas. We have different ways to get there, mm -hmm. but we all want the same goal, which just makes this all move so nicely. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and then how can we encourage people to continue to visit? Not only once they come and visit to continue to come back, but how can we get them here in the first place? By being positive. I mean, I'm a big champion of the positive attitude. If you're happy and positive to your customer that's in your store, if they're a tourist, they're gonna go back home and talk about this darling town called Alpina and what a great time, how refreshed they were when they came back into town. And they're gonna bring three people or their family are gonna come visit. They're gonna revisit. They're gonna buy a cabin on the lake and they'll retire here. It's just a cyclical thing. So even if they're stopping in for a cup of coffee, that's your first chance. And looking forward to the summer, what kind of things do we have going on for tourists to take part in? Oh, there's tons. <laughs> I mean, we're going to be hopping downtown in all reality. We've got the Shriners coming to town. We've got a Bicycle Week coming to town. We've got the Harley Group coming to town. Brown Trout, of course, which right. is a nationwide festival. Mm -hmm. The Fourth of July around here just absolutely rocks. I mean, you just don't want to be any place else. And then we have the Yorktown, which is a Great Lakes cruise ship coming four different times to Alpena, and they'll disembark right behind the armory. Right. And, you know, we'll have all those tourists coming not just to downtown Alpena, but the whole region. Mm -hmm. So a great time for Alpena. Oh. Um, the sun's out finally. Yeah. And uh, so many things for people to get involved in here locally, but also tourists. Oh, absolutely. All right. Well, thank yeah. you so much for sitting yeah. down with me and um, explaining about all the attractions that we have here at Alpena. Well, I hope to see you walking around. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> you can see me all summer. Yeah, excellent. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Well, that will wrap up this edition of Insights. You can catch us back here on Sunday at 1130. Have a good one. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News.
If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.